Shalom, Shalom Rastafari, and this will be the part three. Once again, this is this Tisselot, right? The Tisselot, which um, James Tisselt, excuse me, James Tisselt image right here for the 29th uh, sabbatical reading and feeding from Vayikra or the Hebrew book of Leviticus, the portion three. And this is the image right here. The two priests are destroyed, a watercolor circa 1896. That was a good year. Um, to 1902 by an artist named James uh, Tissot. One of I and I, um, I'll say personal favorites as an artist, a very dramatic, you know, um, picture right here. And you can see the two priests who are the sons of Ara, Nadab and Abihu. And you can see here's the altar of incense. And we're now up to uh, Leviticus 16 verses, uh, was it 12 to 13, which is speaking about the proper way now to enter in to the tabernacle. Now, we want to point out this art for the artists, for a lot of the, the young Hebrew, Ethiopian and Hebrew artists and the Rastafari artists. Check out this painter here, James Tissot. You can check him out in some of the sabbatical um, um, studies of Torah portion books, as well as on the, on the Wikipedia. You can look up his name, James Tissot, T-I-S-S-O-T. -S check out some of his art. Some of his art is very interesting. Um, from some cultural other aesthetics, um, he, he's very good at that. And I said he's a good inspiration, one good inspiration, you know, um, for our artists who are seeking to um, uh, express the story within our humanity, you know, to express, to paint the Bible in our humanity. He's a pretty good artist right there. So we just want to touch on James uh, Tissot. Now we're in the 29th um, portion which we know right here, according to our Sabbath house uh, readings and feedings, 29th as Kamotu, Kamotu Bechala, or Kamotu Bechala, in the Hebrew and the Masoretic is Ahare, Ahare Mot, which means an after, after death, but in this sense, Bamarinya can mean after his death, or it can mean Kamotu, after, in a sense, after they died speaking about um, Nadab and Abihu, the rebellious um, sons of Haron or of Aaron. Now, in this particular portion, and we brought up this for this part, part three right here, we had located this particular image because there's been a lot of speculation about what the um, Ark of the Covenant actually looked like. So different artists have have portrayed it in different ways. And I think this is also an interesting um, portrayal of the Ark of the Covenant. You can see this, this um, some will say this looks like the diamond, so-called Jay-Z or, or Jehovah, you understand, diamond right here. And one particular video maker had did a pretty interesting, um, I think is a truth teller, the truthier, another brother out there, he had touched on this. We have the vid, I don't recall the name right at this moment. When I do, I'll try to remind you of it. And he touches on, you know, throwing up the so-called diamond rock and how there's some blasphemy to that if you really understand, uh, you know, the Ark of the Covenant. And this, this triangular, upward triangular shape is envisioned by some where it talks about how the, the Kiru, the Kerub, or the Kepra, how the Kepra's wings would meet. Right now, here we're learning that um, Aaron, the high priest, is given um, exact instructions. First, he's told not to go to the ark at any time he pleases. You understand? He can't go whenever he pleases. And when he does, we get to find out that he can only make that entry into the sacred precincts, you understand, the sacred precincts um, once a year. Now, Hebrews now contrast. Um, this is a very small picture here. Our high priest, um, Yeshua, you understand, with the old um, Hebrew um, uh, mosaic and ironic, the ironic, ironic you can say too. It's ironic that Aaron, from Aaron will come the priesthood when you look at it as well on a certain level of word, sound, and power. But now, Aaron now is to go with this incense, the coals, right, and with the ancients behind the, 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 the veil, you understand? 
behind the veil. Now, as we were reading in the last portion and studying in the last portion, there's, there's a couple other pictures that we want just to demonstrate um, as 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 kind of site samples, what we spoke about before. But this is also another interesting um, picture of, of, of the ark. Now, Aaron will basically go into the ark with the incense. You can see right here with the ancients. You understand? With the ancients in the censer. And he used to burn it. And it says, Keely and chiefly, least he die. If you look in Leviticus chapter 16, verses... Um, 12 to 13 said that he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before Yahweh and his hands full. Notice it says his hands full, right, of sweet ancients, of sweet incense, beaten small, beaten down small, broken down small, and bring it within the veil. So here we see an artist's rendition of a priest. You understand, of a priest coming in beyond the veil before the Ark of the Covenant with the Aishans, right? Now, we have to contrast this with um, those who died because they did not receive instruction, and they went in to the holy place in an unholy way. Now, we make a, a, a likeness of this to even the Aishans or the Kanabosh, the Kanabush or the cannabis. You understand? There's a way of doing it which is right and which is holy, and there's another way which is not. And, and this is one reason for the bad trips and the other things that, that are the common symptoms of many who burn the Kanabush just to get high. So we see a, um, a likeness or a type even concerning the Kana bush or the cannabis in this instruction here um, concerning Aaron going into the holy place. Now, note, they were only able to go into the holy place, the high priest, once a year. Now, in Yeshua HaMoshiach, through Yeshua HaMoshiach, we as the once lost but now found, and all true Christian have that spiritual and that access into the holy place in the blood of Yeshua, you understand? And remember, blood symbolizes life. So in the life of Yeshua, actualizing the life of Yeshua, seeking to actualize consciously the walk of Yeshua, that means becoming a true Christian, you have access into the holy place, you understand, and into the presence of the Father at all times in the authority of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. And this is because of his perfect, you understand, because of his perfect sacrifice, you understand, where he has overcome, you understand, death, the skull, and the bones, you understand, now, for us, he is that brazen serpent, a symbol of that brazen serpent lifted up in the wilderness, lifting up the true humanity of Yeshua HaMoshiach as the black Moshiach, not bragging and boasting because he's black, but recognizing the significance of it in reality. You understand? And we as once lost but now found Beta Israel to whom more has been given to us, more in the presence of the Father and the Son, the presence of the two truths of the of the divine and heavenly Ma'at, more is required of us. So this is more than a bragging point. Christ is Jesus is black. Because then, you know, uh, white folks who really know the truth, they'll be like, I don't deny that, but that means there's more responsibility on you, ain't it? And, and there is, according to his instructions. You see, so here's another kind of example right here of the entry into the tabernacle or conception of it. Some conceive that the incense will be burned here, but it's clear that the incense will be burned much closer up to the Ark of the Covenant by the mercy seat. As we read on, it says right here that he shall bring it within the veil. So we see right here is, is a... Uh, is the veil. You know what I'm saying? He shall bring it within the veil. He shall go in the veil. And it says, within the veil, and he shall put the Aishans upon the fire before Yahweh, that the cloud of incense may cover, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. So if, if, if Aaron is to, was to disregard this, 
basically what we get to learn is that the same thing that uh, occurred or happened to his sons, what we see demonstrated right here, would happen to him. Jehovah's would happen to him. So now we're finding the right way of burning the incense, the fire that is not strange. You understand? The fire that is not strange. So the key caveat of this is that he, he died not. And it says that he shall take the blood of the blood of the bullock, of the bull, that ancient type, that ancient, we could say Adamic type, the bull. You understand? This is why we see the bull as this metaphor even in Egypt and, and ancient religions. Now we have the same metaphor now being taken to its higher state through the Hebrews and the fulfillment in its higher state, you know what I'm saying, in the sacrifice, you know what I'm saying, of Yeshua, the one sacrifice for all time. And, and notice the incredible relief when this is finally fulfilled in the consciousness of human beings on the animal creation. You understand? In other words, the animals are not to take a substitutionary sacrifice, but each of us, in the example of Yeshua, is to be a living sacrifice, Romans chapter 12. So it says that he shall take up the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood of the blood, of his finger seven times. So now we see the number seven also kind of coming into this equation. And then it goes on to say that he shall kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people. So now he shall kill the goat. Now the goat is an interesting symbol. Let's see if we can bring some of this on the side right here and, and, and get back to the, the scapegoat imagery right here. So he shall kill the goat. Notice this goat now. This goat now is to be killed, right? And the goat of the sin offering that is for the people. So the goat is a sin offering. The goat, you know, the, you know the, the parable of the sheep and the goat in the Bible? Well, here's, here's the crux. You understand? Here, here is the operation, the, 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 the system, the OS, the operating software. This, this, when we study Torah, we're studying the operating software. You understand? But then we go XP. You know what I'm saying? Is the New Testament. XP is in Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's how now Yeshua HaMoshiach perfected, you understand? Know how he perfected these, these particular types. You understand? Know but now the, the goat is for the people. Now, I want you to understand that, that the goat is not Christ in that sense. Christ is not the goat. But the goat now, it symbolizes the people. And, and, and I want you to keep in mind this, um, this uh, suit typhonian, because in ancient Egyptian times or in the, in the times of the Hebrews, they understood and they recognized this symbology. So it wasn't escaped on them when it talked about Azazel. You understand? That, that, that idea, it may escape modern people now, but this idea and this connection with Azazel, now that Aaron, one of them, you understand, is going to be killed for Yahweh, and the other one, the other goat, is going to be sent into the wilderness. Isn't this very interesting? So one of the, one of the goats is for the sin offering for the people, and he brings the blood, which is the life force, within the veil. And do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So now Haron or Aaron is to do what? He is to sprinkle this blood, you understand, in the Holy of Holies. You understand? Remember, this takes place one time, you understand, a year. This was an annual, you understand, an annual Moedim. Uh, annual preparation for the fullness of, of, of that redemption which is to come in its own cycle, that, that sothic, some call it the sothic cycle, you understand? Um, so Aaron was then to offer the bull of sin offering. Aaron was to take a pan of the, well, we touched on that, the glowing coals of the altar, so forth and so on. And he was to now sprinkle some of the blood, the bull's blood, and some of the goat's blood over and in front of the ark. So over 
and in front of the ark. Now, we see the European versions. Some might say perversions, but um, all of them were not so much perversions intentionally, but they're interesting as what some sincere people, artists, were really conceiving of. One of the interesting ones that seemed closest to what the ark most likely coming out of its Egyptian origins would look like on an interesting level would be these right here because they have the likeness of the Kepra, the, the Kepra. You know I'm not going to go into too much detail right here on that, but just to give you a couple more examples of what um, the arcs look like, you know, or what some say. Now, if we go back to ancient Egypt, right, and some will say, well, forget all of that. You understand? Let's look at what the Egyptians conceived of, of arcs, which were portable tabernacles. The ark was a portable tabernacle. We have this interesting imagery right here, which is, which is like to an Egyptian. This was not lost on Musa. This type of ark was not lost on Musa. Now, people say, well, this is, they'll try to say this is the goddess, this or that. But actually, this is also the Kepra. You understand, the Kepra, or what you call the Kerub, the Kerub, the Kepar, same thing when you understand the linguistics of it. But now, Aaron is to sprinkle some of the, the bull's blood and then some of the goat's blood for, over in front of the ark to purge the shrine of uncleanness. This is a portable shrine right here, the ark of the cup, the purges of uncleanness and the transgression of the Israelites, of the Beta Israel. So this was an annual um, cleansing, you understand, of the people. Now, remember, this particular Yom Kippur for us is, let's just call it right after September 11th. Yom Kippur comes in that particular fall festival season uh, around after the, what do we call it, from the Jewish perspective, they used to call it the Civil New Year. From the Ethiopian perspective, we call it the Addis Amen or New Year. So we see this, this um, alignment, this correspondence between the ancient Judaic, you understand, or black Hebrew, black Jewish, you understand, and the, and the Ethiopic and the Christian. So we have the Judeo-Christian Fulfillment. This is revelation. You know, this is this is if this was taught. You understand if the, if the true Ethiopic roots was taught. You understand, and the true racial identity was taught. We might have had a uh, heaven on earth. The, the the will of God, you know, would have been fulfilled. Thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. But we have too many counterfeit pastors and preachers that will tell you, and probably already have told you, that it's not our job to bring heaven to earth. Woe yo lacho, woe to them. So he was to, Aaron was then to apply some of the bull's blood and the goat's blood to the altar to cleanse it and to consecrate it. Let's show you this particular image that we have in the third um, Torah portion of Azazel. It's kind of interesting, and this is, you know, when we say that the, the pentagram actually links with that, you know, because it's the goat. That was the goat sent into the wilderness. We're here in the wilderness of North America. So, so you go figure. You understand this Satanism thing is on the rise. You go figure. But see, Jah has already figured that and has already given us the key of overcoming. You know what I'm Now, they said this right here is one imaging of Azazel. This is from a 1825 uh, uh, dictionnaire inferno. In other words, a dictionary of hell, basically. I think it's the French by somebody named Colin D. Plancy, Colin D. Plancy right here. And um, now, <laughs> they say that this is the Azazel. Remember one, give unto God what is God's, and give unto uh, Caesar what is Caesar. One goat was sacrificed to Yahweh, and the other one was let go into the wilderness. And here we are in the wilderness of North America. Christ says that the sheep will be on the right and the goat on the left. And so the goat represents the sinner, right? The goat represents the sinner or the rebellious. You always say, now notice also the two goats idea is interesting. One slain, one let go to the wilderness for Lemi Lekek or for Azazel. Now, Aaron, right, he was to lay his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over the Israelite sin. 
Now, this is not the goat right here. We just wanted to show you this, that, you know, from the 1825, they imaged that the person that this goat was being sent to look something like this. Remember, Christ in the wilderness for 40 days, and he gets into a contest with um, 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 Satan, you know what I'm saying, or devil, or Azazel, and overcomes him, right? So here, now, Adam, he used to lay his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it the Israelite sin, putting them on the head of the goat. And then through a designated man, send it off to the wilderness to carry their sins to an inaccessible region. You understand? Remember when the, the Bible says that he has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west and see us as the lost sheep over here out in the west? You understand? In what is known as the wilderness. So one of them, right, one of them was sacrificed, slain, gone. Now this other one, he will put the sins of who? The people on this particular, on this particular goat, right, and send it out in the wilderness to, to Azazel or some say to the devil or to one of the fallen angels according to, to Enoch. You understand? And we already showed you how um, in 1825 they pictured, you understand, uh, Colin the plants, he pictured this particular good, you know what I'm saying, which has become for many a god, right? But it's the sins of the Israelites that are laid on this Baphomet, this, 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 this goat for Azazel, and it's supposed to be sent into an inaccessible region, Leviticus 16, 21 to 22. Then Aaron was to go into the tabernacle, take off his linen vestments, bathe in water, put on his linen vest, his vestments, and then to offer the burnt offering. So after this, he had to change. You understand? So, so there's a, there's a particular um, process, and we have the bathing. You understand? The bathing will be synonymous with a kind of um, the, the the sense of 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 of, of baptism. Right, and so this is this section right here, the scapegoat. Let's bring that right there just to put the context back up here. So, the one who set the Azazel goat free was to wash his clothes and bathe in the water. So, now the one who had to set this, the one who was designated to take this take the, the Baphomet, the goat of Mendes, the goat for Azazel into the wilderness, he had to also purge himself. So, so remember, we overcome this stuff right here, all this so-called cultism, if you're, 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 you're grounded, you understand, on the truth. If you have accepted the truth of Yeshua HaMoshiach and studied to show yourself approved, then you understand how all this comes under the cross. So when we show you the, the image of um, Christ, you understand, being, being um, 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 crucified in the place that the Bible calls Golgotha, you understand, it makes perfect sense why it's called the place of the skull. You understand, the place of the skull, because he conquered, he overcame Satan, and through him we overcome Satan. Outside of Christ, we're lost. It's, 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 it's effed up. I mean, to, to say it most explicitly if we could, but not to say it explicitly, as, as we should not during this Shabbatical study right here. Now, the bull and the goat of sin offering were to be taken outside the camp and burned. You understand? And he who burned them was to wash his clothes and bathe in water. So we have this continuous um, example of purging and purifying. So we see all the elements also being, being utilized. You know what I'm saying? We see the, the, the water, we see the, 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 the wood, you understand? Know we see the, um, the, the, the fire, you understand? Know we see the earth, all of these manifested. Last part right here, right? Now, the text then commands that this is a law for all time. On the tenth day of the seventh month, the, the Hebrews and the non-Hebrews or aliens who are not Hebrews, you understand, um, who reside with them, who, who are basically part of our community, you understand, we could say the, the righteous Africans, the Ethiopian Hebrews and the Gentiles, the righteous Gentiles who reside with them, were to practice self-denial and do no work. Self-denial. You see, people don't practice self-denial uh, nowadays. That's why 
um, they can't resist the demonic entities because they have no spiritual discipline. Think about it. You understand? Know Shabbat is the best time to begin to think about it. Leviticus 16, 29. On that day, the high priest of the Kahin HaGadol, who in the fullness is Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, was to put on the linen vestments, purge, notice, purge the tabernacle, and make atonement for the Beit Israel once a year, Leviticus 16, 30 to 34. Now, as we go forward with this and dealing with, well, what is atonement, plus some more of the footnote on the two goats that we find in the Schofield uh, Study Bible at the bottom of chapter um, 16 and on page uh, 147 and 148. You can download it, Schofield Reference Bible, for free. We're going to get into that um, more, but even if we don't go into all the details, you should study it and learn it for yourself. It's very, very interesting. My brothers and sisters, stay tuned. We're going to deal with the next part of this. Um, shortly, once again, Shalom Ras Tefari. And I and I love the I. Why? Because the I them love to study I and I Father's Word, this love letter of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. One love, my brothers and sisters. Shalom Ras Tefari.